Good evening everyone. Um, I'm Chrissy. I'm from Coop UK and I am going to do a Facebook Live this evening all about... Okay, so good evening. Um, it's Chrissy here from Coop UK. Hi Kate, thank you for joining me. Kate, I'm just going to do a test with you just so as I know that you can see the screen the right, right way round. So can you please tell me, can you see the screen the white ray right away round, Kate? Let me just move that slightly so she can see the whole screen. Little thumbs up would be nice. Thank you very much, Kate. Okay, so I'm going to give it a minute until we get more people joining. Let me just readjust the screen like so. Bear with me. Okay. Um, it would be a lovely idea if you can pop your name into the comments below so as I know who's watching. Hi Kerry, nice to see that you're joining. Um, and just to let you know that as with my Go demonstration, this one will also be on the group for 30 days. So please don't worry for those of you who think, oh no, I can't watch it all or I'm going to miss part of it. It will be on the screen for 30 days on the Facebook group rather, so you can go into it any time that you like. Hello Susanna, so pleased that you managed to join us. Um, and again, I want to say a huge thank you Susanna, um, you blew me away today. Right, okay, so this demonstration is all about the Collop Gmark Create. And I'm just going to turn you around Oh, hello, Keris. I understand that Keris is also watching. So, um, for those of you, I'm sure you all know me by now. I'm Chrissy, and I work for Collip UK. This is the Collip Emark Create, and this demonstration I'm doing tonight is all about this device. I did the Go last week. It's the Create this evening, and next week, possibly on Tuesday, I will let you know. I shall be doing the same demonstration, but using the Emark app. So let's get started. Hello, Susan. Um, another person who's I'm great to see has joined. Um, so inside your box, when you get your create, you get a box and it will tell you the contents and everything that you should receive. Do save this box. It um, does supply you with some in interesting information. And I'm just going to open the box like so. Now the Color P Mark Create is compatible with iOS, that's your iPhone and your iPad, and also Android, anything with Google Play. So again, you can use it with your phone or with your, um, hello Eileen, with your um, tablet. You can also use this with the desktop. It does have a desktop version, Windows 10 and above. So I'm going to open the box and just show you what's inside it. One Create. Okay, you know it's a little bit of plastic. That's there, please do take that off when you start charging. You also get your technical information. So there's information um, on how to um, insert the cartridge, etc. And also very important, there is your quick setup guide. Please, please, please do keep this handy. I know that a few of our members have um, mislaid this and so not been able to find their SSID, but I'm going to show you in a little while how to locate that if you have lost this. So when we open this out, lots of information on here, and there we have our SSID and password, and that's unique to your particular device. Also in the Create box, you'll notice that you have, let's turn this around, you've got your charging cable and a, an HP Tricolor C2 cartridge. That all comes with it. The charging cable, I'm just going to show you this. You have to use this particular one. It's made specifically for the eMark. Hello, Kimmy and the Create. You can see it's got that little bulb at the bottom of it. Please don't try and charge your device with um, any other um, charging cable because um, this one is there specifically for it. And you cannot use or you cannot charge your eMark Create nor your eMark with the USB cable. So 
If you have a USB cable, that is there because um, you can use it with the desktop. So let's say, for example, you're using the desktop version and you want to keep your emails running so you can carry on working at the same time. Then this is the reason why you get a USB cable in with the eMark device, but not with the Create, but you can use any micro USB cable. Um, again, I'll cover that again in a minute. So let's take a look at the device itself. Let's pop this back a little bit. Comes in a choice of white or black. Okay, I'm using the white one for demonstrating tonight just to do a couple of imprints. But I'm going to show you um, around the Create. Um, there's our base. Now I do have a foot missing, so I do need to pop that back on. If I take this off and show you the underside, here is your printed tank. So when you are doing your, wipe, your weekly wipe, um, do give that a little wipe as well, both inside the tank and around the outside. So this is the underside of the Create. Here's your print head, a little magnet there. And then you can see that we have our sensor. Now that sensor needs to be touching the surface that you are printing on at all times, which is the reason why we have the ruler. Okay, so if you're wanting to print on tiny little baubles or, you know, tiny little, whatever little bits you've got, then use the ruler when you're doing your imprints. We've also got rollers and these rollers are there to help you glide your device. You do not need to apply any pressure. You simply just glide your device and you can use all of our devices, whether you're, if you're left handed as well. So left to right and right to left. Okay. Now, you can also see we have our on-off switch there. If I just pop this back on here, you don't need to take it off the base. You can just turn it on and off from there. So to get to the battery, we simply remove this protective cover like so. And as you can see, we have our battery here. So we just need to unclip this and I don't know if I'm able to do it. Yes, I have. So, take the battery off and to get to the cartridge for both inserting and um, removing you need to have that door open so let me just take this cartridge out so when you receive your device you receive it like this take that top off take the battery off and then we need to open that little door underneath please do not try to insert or remove the battery sorry the cartridge unless you have this open. Now to open it, you simply pop your finger in there like so, and then we're pushing down to open it. So when you get your device, it may be a little stiff, but once you've opened it a couple of times, you'll get there. So to put your cartridge in, when you've taken your cartridge out of its packaging, you will have a seal on it. Carefully take that seal off, make sure the whole of the seal is off that print head. And then the thicker side of the cartridge goes in first. So we simply, remember that door is open there. Push it in with your finger and then using your thumbnail, just flick it up slightly just to make sure it is nice and flush on the underside. Then we close that door, click the battery on and then pop the protective cover on. Now, if I turn this over, you'll see that that is absolutely perfectly flush. If there was an edge slit sticking up, even ever so slightly there, you'll need to take the cap off and pop your fingernail under that pink top of the cartridge and make sure it's nicely flush. Otherwise, it won't print properly. Okay. So then that is now ready to use. I'm just going to show you on the back of the e-mark this is where we put our charging cable okay so that slots in there it doesn't go all the way in so please don't worry about that and to charge your device our e-mark and our e-mark create takes around three hours for a full charge when it's fully charged you will see two green solid lights on the back that means it's got a full charge. If you've got the light still flashing, then it still needs to continue charging. So there is your USB port. So this on the Create and on the eMark is so as you can use it with the desktop version. 
If you want to continue using your emails, for example, if you prefer to use it by the Wi-Fi, then you can do so, okay? But most people want to keep their email, um, emails running whilst they're using their devices with the desktop. Okay, so now I'm going to turn you around and show you the app. If at any point you have any questions, I have um, a couple of admin on here this evening. We've got the lovely Kim and Katie, and we also have, um, I'm thinking we may have a couple of our experts as well. So the group experts are, um, obviously we've got Kimmy, we've got myself, and we have Wendy, Wendy Hogarth, and we have the lovely Kate, and we have Jane and Wendy, and we also have Karen, Cameron, Karen Cameron. So, if I've missed anybody, I do apologise, but I don't think I have. So, there are lots of us here to help you. If you need to send me a personal message, if there's something that you don't want to um, put on the group, then please do feel free to send me a personal message. Um, I tend to pick those up quicker than I do the notifications on the group. Something to do with Facebook, I don't know, but there's always somebody there. Um, now, you'll notice that um, regularly, I'll tell you that there is an update. It really is important that you do agree to those updates. If you don't, then it may impact the way your device works. And another thing that is very important, please, please, please do make sure that the software on your mobile devices is also up to date. Um, right, you'll get going. So I'm going to turn you around. I think you've seen enough of me now. So I'm just going to turn you around. There we go. And you can see the app. So this is the Create app. Now you'll notice that I have my three levels are all highlighted green. That is because I am connected to my email Create. That blue light means I'm connected to the mobile device. If I was using my USB cable with the desktop version, that light would be pink because I'm using it with a mobile device, it's blue. Okay. So this is the eMark Connect page. Now the best way to connect to your device is by clicking on my eMark. You see my eMark create there. When you first download the app, you'll be asked to put in your SSID and your password. It's case sensitive. So please do be mindful when you're inserting that to put it in exactly how it reads there. So lowercase, there's no spaces. And as you can see that F at the back there is um, capital letters. Yours will be different to this, but just inserting exactly as it reads on your SSID, your quick setup guide. So that's exactly what I've done. So I recommend you connect using this, just below the eMark Connect, you've got an image of the eMark and you've got the My eMark and it says Create there. So I'm going to click on there and then I'm going to click on mine. You'll only have the one on yours, um, so don't worry about that. So then click on your particular device and then your device will connect first. In fact, let me, let me go back. Actually, let me go back. Let me disconnect this and I'll show it you from scratch. I think that's going to be easier. Okay, let me just download some of these. Okay. So, this is your eMark Create icon. So, it's this one that we're using, the nice colourful one here. And I'm starting with um, my Create. It's got no light on the back right, but just watch what happens when I do connect. So, if I click on that eMark Create, and then I'm going to click on my eMark Create just there. And then I'm just going to click on this one here. It'll ask you to join. So you simply click on join and then watch what happens to the back right of my eMark Create. There we go. So the, my eMark is now connected. The eMark always connects first, followed by the app. And that might take a few seconds. So I'm connected. I have a 100% ink and I've got 92% battery. When your ink and your battery levels drop below a certain level, with the battery it's 26%, when you get to 26%, your light will turn amber, as will the light on the back left of your device. 
So that tells you that your battery is running low and you need to think about connecting, and sorry, charging. Somebody asked me the other day, can you use the eMark Create whilst it's charging? If it's for the odd sentence or text, then yes, but I wouldn't recommend that you use it um, for any much more than that because you've got that current of electricity going through and, and it could impact the ink, it could dry it. So um, best to sort of use it when you've got plenty of charge. So this is my eMark Connect page. So from here, I can disconnect the eMark. I'm going to just go through everything as I get to it. Okay, Q. I'm going to click on the Q. If you haven't had a play with this, please do, because it will save you a lot of time, particularly if you have um, lots of cards that you're going to make. Let's say, for example, Christmas time when we're making lots of cards and you might want to, <coughs> excuse me, use, say, seven or eight imprints. And if you have them all saved in that queue, I'm just going to click OK then you can print one after the other without even having to put your device down. So let's say, for example, I'm going to select this one. Um, I'm just going to just add any, that one, that one. I might want this one and this one and that one. And then all you do is you click on add selected imprints. Now, as you can see, they have all added to my queue. Now, when I click on send imprint to eMark, I am going to show you this. So just let me get myself ready. No questions coming through as yet. So I take it I am um, keeping you all interested, which is good. So I'm going to click on send imprint to eMark. Your eMark will behave as it does with any imprint. So if I just move this down, it sent that one. Now I'm just going to turn you around, just so as you can see what I'm doing. Bear with me. So this is that first one. And now the second one, I'll just turn it up. There we go, that next one has been sent to the email. I'm just going to show you that one. And it will go on and on until it's finished, all of those imprints. I'll just move you back up again. So you can see how, um, how easy it is to use the queue, but also how much of an advantage it is. I use it all the time, particularly, you know, if I'm doing lots of labels and things and I might want to put two items on the front and one item on the back. I can do all my labels without even having to put the device down. So I'm just going to click on stop the print queue. If you want to remove anything that you have in your print queue, you simply click on the cross next to it. Okay, Oops. just do that. There we go. You can also from this page change your imprint start point. You can see on the top there it says handmade with love by Chrissy and the start position is center, which is a default. But if I want to start that from lateral, which means my imprint will start from the sides, either edge, okay? And that's great if you're putting it onto labels. And do remember, we do have our collop um, labels, our remark labels. They've already got the outlines there for you. So you'd simply just click on that and change it to lateral. And then that will print from the side of your device. Um, um, so I'm just going to answer a quick question. And hi, Dulcie. Yes, I've just got your message. Now, Dulcie wanted to know how to change the cartridge. Um, Dulcie, you'll see this at the end of my demonstration. It will be saved on the group for 30 days. So you can see it right at the beginning of my demonstration. So you haven't really missed anything. OK, so I'm quite happy with everything else. And then when you're ready, you simply just click on the send um, imprint to eMark. OK, so let's just go back now. We also from here can create a new imprint. Click on new imprint and it will take you to the new imprint page. From here, you can select a one, two and three line imprint. If I just click on one line, for example, 
and then I'm going to go through a one line imprint. You always, when you're wanting to um, create text, click on A for text. Now this is where a lot of people um, get a little bit confused because they think that they can click in there and it will bring up the, the keyboard. So we click on A for text and then you can see this white box here. It says edit text. Click in that white box there and it will bring up your keyboard. So then you simply just pop in your text. I'm just going to pop there, click on hello. And then there's two options. You can either click on the tick or you can click on the keyboard to take you back to this imprint line. But let me click on the tick and there's my imprint line. Now we have options. So I'm going to click on properties. From properties, I can change this one line imprint to a two line imprint or a three line imprint if I so wish, just by selecting a two or a three. I can also change my um, width, so my imprint width. So let's say for example, I'm going to be printing my hello onto a card that measures 50 millimeters. All I need to do is change my width. So put my finger on that little, you see that little white dot there and change that to, let's say if it's 30, um, 50, let me make it, or let's say I want it to be 45. Now don't worry if you can't get the exact size. All you need to do is click in that width box, so in that white little bit there, remove what's in there and then simply put 45 in there and then click OK. So that is my working space. So now I can make my changes. I'd always recommend that you change your font first. So we can click on font. Then we click in the white section of the font box. Just say, see it says Amiri. We click on that white section and it brings up all of your preloaded um, fonts. So ignore the ones that are in the red, ready brown. They're the ones that I've actually added myself and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Now, as you can see, we have a lot of fonts on there for you to use, but it's also very easy to add fonts. So I'll do that in a minute. So I'm going to select a font and I'm going to select this font, Dinah Swanky. Now, the reason I select the font first um, it's because if I make that the size I want it to be before I change the font, then it's going to be outside of my working space. So now I'm going to just click on it to highlight it and then we click on scale. OK, and then we can change that size. Remember, it does need to fit inside that box. Now, I know with this particular one, there we go, I can have it as big as that. So there's my hello that will not go over my 50 millimeter card. So now we're going to change the color, click on the color. Remember we have all of these colors available for you to use. Now, one thing I will point out at this point is whatever color you see on your iPad or your phone will not be exact to that that prints. It's never going to be the same color. It will all, your printed one will always be darker. So please don't worry about that. So let's select a colour. Let's go for a pink. No surprise there. And then you can rotate. You can also go into your settings, which I'm going to do in a minute. Um, but once you're ready to send that to the eMark, you've got two options. You can either send it by clicking on the eMark icon there. The print queue will be cleared, proceed, click OK. That will also save that imprint, or you can just save it and then print it another time. Now, I know a lot of people also get confused. They think that they have to save the imprint first before sending it. With our eMark and the eMark Create, you can send it and it will also save. And just to show you, I'm just going to go back into my imprints and there you will see the hello. There we go, right at the top. So now I'm going to edit that one. So let me click on the white section and you get this pop-up box. So we can edit, we can name it, add tags, 
share and export, duplicate and delete. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to edit it. Keep questions coming in if there are any, please. So I'm going to click on edit in print. First thing I'm going to do now is make that working space bigger because I'm going to add some images. So we click on properties. But before I do that, how many of you have used the grid? If you haven't, why not? It really is an advantage. It means that you can um, align things very easily. So there's my grid and you can also change the size of your grid by clicking in this grid size here, which is in millimeters. So I'm going to click on that little number there. Can you see that roll up um, or the roll up, that little roll up gray bar there? So I'm going to select 3.6 because this is the one I tend to use because it gives me four equal squares in that imprint line. And then when you've selected the size of um, the grid that you want, click on done. Now I'm going to click on properties and I'm going to increase my imprint line by just moving that bar across. I'm going to maximize it, make it the, hun the full 150. And then we click OK. I will go back to that properties box in a moment. So to add anything, so for example, you've got an option to add a background colour. So if I click on the background and let me just select something that will match that. OK, so there's my background colour. Now, if you're printing that onto 50 millimetre ribbon, you will get a, a white line at the top of your ribbon and one below, which I think looks quite attractive. If you're printing onto your 25 millimetre ribbon, all that will appear in the centre of your 25 millimetre ribbon. And if you're printing on 10 millimetre um, ribbon, then you will need to make that hello smaller. And, and first of all, I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom so as you can see it a little bit bigger. How many of you use the zoom? If you're using the phones, this is particularly useful for you. Click on the zoom gives you a bigger working space. You can adjust that just by clicking on that bar. You see that bar there, that little toggle? You can move that just like so, but let's keep it full for now. So if you're making or wanting to print that onto 10 millimeter ribbon without using the templates, then that hello needs to be pretty much in the center of those two um, on those, those grids, you see the, the middle two grids there. Yeah, okay. So let me just make that slightly smaller now, come out of here. That's it, because I'm gonna add some images. Click on add. We've already got text, so now we want an image. So we click on image. You've got options here. You can select on the clip art. Select a category. As you can see, we have quite a few on here. Let me select this one here. There's my little bird. OK, now you can duplicate as well. So I'm just going to move the bird down and the hello across. And I'm going to highlight the bird. So you have to highlight the image that you wish to duplicate. And then I'm going to go into settings. And there's my option to duplicate. So then I'm going to move my little bird across. OK, so that's how you duplicate. We can also, because it's highlighted with that green box, we can make our bird a little bit smaller, which I'm going to do so just here. And then I'm going to duplicate it again. I can because it's got the green highlight box around. I'm going to settings, duplicate, move the bird. And then I'm going to click on rotate, click on rotate. Again, you have options. These features are all there to help you. So we can use either use these features. Oops, change the colour there. Let me just go back. Oops, change it back to pink. We just do the undo. Now, how many of you have done use the undo before? Undo, redo. If you haven't used them and you've made a mistake, please don't forget that they are there for you to use, just as I have now. So I've highlighted my bird. 
I'm going to click on rotate and I'm just going to use my fingers to rotate it. You see how easy it is? There we go. So we've now covered um, scale, background, we've gone into settings. We've also got in settings options to sort. And I know a lot of people um, get a little bit confused about this. So I'm going to click on my hello and I'm going to change the colour. I'm going to change that just to black for now, just so you can see what I'm doing with the sort. So then I'm going to click on the bird and move the bird over to the hello. Now I'm going to sort it so as that bird is behind my hello. And I do that by going into settings, click on sort. Then we click background, back, and then anywhere on that imprint line. I'll do that again. I'll use this one. Let me just um, move this across. There we go. So I've highlighted the object that I wish to sort. I'm going to settings, click on sort. I know it's appeared at the background already, but you still need to go through the process. Click on background, then back, and then anywhere on the imprint line. If you, ha well, hello Sandra. If you haven't used that sort, play with it, give it a go. I think you'll find it useful, particularly at Christmas time when we're doing lots of snowy pictures and we want mountains um, either behind the snow or in front of the snow. You'll have a lot of fun with that. Do have a play. So also on here, we have shapes. I'm going to click on shapes. I'm just going to move this one over slightly and make it smaller. It's highlighted. Remember, we've got that green highlighted box there, which means I can make changes. So let me just click on here, highlight that. And I'm just going to make that smaller. By, oops, I need to use my two fingers with this one, bear with me. So just make that a little bit smaller. I need to touch on those two dots and make that slightly bigger. Okay. Oops. Here we go. <laughs> Having fun here. Let me turn this around. Rotate it. There we go. This is what I want to do. Okay. There we go. Come on. Never works when you want it to. Please bear with me. There we go. Right, okay, so the reason why I'm using this one is because I want to show you how to thicken that line. Um, click on style, remember it's got that green highlighted box around it, so right. click on style, and then you can see thickness and line. So if I move this, put my finger on that white toggle, you see what happens when I move that across? So I've got that line thicker. Now, what about adding a colour? If I click on colour now, the whole um, outer rim, the frame of it, will change to red. But what if I want to change um, the circle? I'm going to show you a circle in a minute. So, But that's how you change that colour there. Now, somebody said to me, but why, why would you want to use that? Why would you want to use one of these circles or oblongs or whatever? Well, I tend to use them. Let me show you. I'm going to add something in there and maybe just put an H in there, then click on the tick. You just, you see what I'm doing now? How many of you wondered what that little blue line is for and that toggle there? Okay, that will take you right back to the beginning. Okay, so I'm going to move that across. Just increase that again and move that across so as you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Highlight the H on the inside, and then I'm going to make that bigger. It's a bit of fun, 
but also it will make anything that you're doing, it will make it stand out. Okay, and again, because it's highlighted, I can go in, I can change the colours, I could go in and change the fonts. Okay, I can also, if you see there's a B there, it means that you can make your text bold. Not all of the preloaded fonts have that, but some of them do. So please don't forget to use that that bold font if you can. Now I'm going to come out of this, but before I do, I'm going to just save it. Okay, in printer saved. So I'm going to come out now and I'm going to go into the same imprint and I'm going to click on rename. So I'm just going to put on here Facebook Live. So as I know, it was from a Facebook Live. Is everybody OK for now? And then we click OK. So that imprint has been saved. And as you can see at the top there, it tells me what that name is. Facebook Live. I'm just going to point this one out now. So you can see this Handmade with Love below. Can you see above it? It's got the size, that's a 50 millimetre and it's a label. And if I just scroll up, above all of your imprints, you will see the size. Okay, now this is useful if you're printing something onto a card and you want to centre things. I will do that in another demonstration. Um, I've already got demonstrations um, about that in albums, but as you can see, there's my sizes. OK, I'm going to click on this one now. Add a tag. OK, I'm just going to put in here um, maybe, oh, I might put my garden in here. If, like me, you have lots and lots of imprints saved, then it is an idea to actually tag things. And by clicking on it again, I can also share and export that. So let's say, for example, I'm going to send that imprint to my lovely colleague and friend, Kimmy. So I click on mail. I'm just going to pop her address in here. OK, and I'm just going to put from me to you. OK, and then can you see we have the attachment there when I send that? When Kimmy receives that, she will see exactly the same attachment and all she needs to do is to click on the attachment and it will open up in the app. Give it a go and I do know that we have a few members who have best friends or even friends, colleagues. Have a play. Send them imprints. Okay. Click on this one again. And we can also duplicate. So if I click on duplicate, just takes a few seconds, you can see it's loading. And then I've got an option. Do you want to edit the duplicated imprint? So what's the point in duplicating an imprint? Well, let's say, for example, you spent a long time creating a particular imprint and you only you want to resend it to somebody else, but you only want to make a minor change then duplicate it rather than having to do the whole lot again. So if I click OK, this is the one I can duplicate and I'm just going to add something on here. I'm going to add another image from Clip Art and let's pop something again from Animals. Let's pop in a ladybird, sorry, a butterfly. Now you'll notice as well that all of your um, text and your images will go to this left hand side. Simply pop your finger on it and move it to where you want it to be. OK, and then I'm just going to click on um, save. So my imprint is saved. And if I go back and I'll show you where it's saved. It's saved at the top there. So there's the original one and there is the one that I've duplicated. And then if I just go back to this pop up box, you can also delete but I'll also show you an easier way to delete shortly. So let me go back to menu. Just going to join again. Now, how many of you 
have seen this message, unable to join network. A couple of reasons for that. First reason is our devices have a three minute sleep mode. Now you can change that and I'll show you where to do that shortly. But if your device has gone to sleep like mine had and you try to connect, you will get this message, unable to join the network. So all we need to do is click OK and then make sure that our device is awake because it will not connect if it's asleep. And then we go to connect. Just find the one it is, it's this one. Now there's another reason why you may get that message. If, for example, you have the app already saved in your task manager, the device will be saying to you, well, actually, it's already open. So I'm not going to let you try and open it again. So this is my task manager. I'm just going to scroll up. Depending upon what device you're using, um, it'll be a different, different way. But go into your settings on your device to find out where your task manager is. I did speak to somebody a few days ago and um, there was this, this lady didn't know, no mentioning no name, she didn't know where the task manager was, but when we went into it, there were so many things in there. You only need to close down the e-mark or anything to do with the e-mark of the crate. So I'm going to literally move that up like so. And then I'm going to click on the e-mark icon and I'm going to start again. So there we go. Remember, we click on that little box there, we find mine, and we're okay to join. Just watch what happens with my device now, the mark create will, here we go, it's connected. So remember those two reasons that you may get that message is because A, your device may be asleep. To wake it up, you simply pick it up off the base and pop it back down again to wake it up. Or you may already have the app open in the task manager and you just need to close that down. Okay, a lot of you will hear me say that one of the most important areas or features on the app is this top corner, top left hand corner. Those three lines is the menu. So if I click on here now, it takes me to my eMark Connect, which is this page here. New imprint my imprints, settings and help. So we've already, we know what the eMark Connect page is. If I go into new imprint, we have these categories here. These categories are there to help you. If I just select this one, for example, everything in these categories um, are editable. So for example, if I click on this top one here, I can click on the the, um, nearly called it a cauliflower then, the hedgehog, <laughs> click in settings, duplicate it. I can also click on Harris, it's got that nice green box around it. I can change the font. So let's just do, let's do something different to do this one. I can make it bigger. Remember it has to be inside that box. I can also change the colour. So everything in those categories you can edit and add to. You can also remove as well. So if I want to remove that hedgehog, click on him to highlight, click on delete, and then delete again. So let's just go back to discard the changes. Go back again to these categories. So the categories are love and weddings, celebrations, kids club, food and drink, Quotes, sayings and sayings, ribbons, labels, signs, wristbands. And you can see on the bottom right, we have the ribbon station. If you are using the ribbon station tool, then you have to use the ribbon station feature. If you're just using um, these ribbon guides on their own, then you will use, let me show you. This one here, ribbons, you're going to ribbons if you are using the ribbon guides on their own and select one of these templates. Um, and I do recommend you use these templates when printing ribbon. Um, it'll get you used to um, sizing, etc. 
So for example, uh, I'm going to use this one. Okay. I'll just go back and remember what that one was now, bear with me. So this one is for the 10 millimeter ribbon. Now you, I've already told you that it needs to be in the center of your imprint line. If you use the templates that are there, let me just go back, you can see that is specifically for your 10 millimeter ribbon. It says so there, and you will not need to make any changes. You can simply, um, you can make some, you know, make any changes you want as to the colors, for example. Um, you can change the font just by clicking on, on it, or you can delete everything in there and start from scratch if you want. You can also add, let me just add an image, and this time I'm going to go into my photo gallery, click on photos. Don't know what's in there. Oh, there's some beautiful flowers that I received today. Thank you, Susanna. And I'm just going to, let me select, I'm going to select these bubbles here. There we go. You can move it because it's highlighted. You can also duplicate it. Go into settings, duplicate. There we go. I'm going to duplicate it again. But did you know that once highlighted, if you wanted three or four of those across there, you can duplicate by doing one, two, three. OK, you can do it as many as you want and then just move your bubbles like so. OK, so that now will print beautifully onto your 10 millimeter ribbon. Just going to go back, discard those changes. So also here we have a template for 15 millimeter and 25, both together, because the maximum height of the printhead is 14 millimeters. Um, so this is a reason why we put it in with the 25 millimeters, because even though we give you 25 millimeter ribbon, that imprint, the 15 millimeter ribbon, will print right in the centre of your ribbon. It looks lovely actually on the 25. And then also here, what else have we got down here? Right, okay. Um, these templates on here, I can't urge you enough to use them. Please do use them. Now, if I just go back, so the ribbon station, I'm going to click on there. I don't know how many of you have ribbon stations, but I know quite a few do. You can see ribbon station. Now, I do know that I get quite a few people message me and they show me images of beautiful rainbow colours back to um, front writing or images and, and text rather. And that is because you are using um, this ribbon station feature when you are printing onto your ribbon guides. This is for printing with the ribbon station tool only. So let's say, for example, I'm going to, it's got uh, Mother's Day coming up, so I'm going to click on this one. I'm happy with that and then I want to print it. So with the ribbon station tool, we need to go into properties. We've got some options here. We've got printing length and if I click in that box, we've got that little roll bar come up. We've also got repeating. That's good if you're wanting to print labels, for example. You know, if you're doing your textile labels for, um, for your children's clothing, you might want to print 25 repeating. So if you're happy with repeating, then you click done and then you can click where it says um, times. So if I just click there, remove the zero and say I want 25. OK, and then we click OK. So when I send that to my e-mark, that will print 25 times. But if I just go back to properties and then click in the repeating and make it printing length, click done. It tells you what you're doing all the time. Then click in, it tells you now centimetres. How many centimetres do you want to print? So again, click in that box, remove the zero, and we might want to print, I don't know, 1,000, for example. I'm going to um, show you this remove white space now. It's currently on crop both. And I know a lot of people get confused about this. What does it mean? If I just come out of here a minute, so currently we have, if I just move this down slightly, there we go. We have white space on the right hand side of our imprint line. If I go back, you'll see it says crop both. 
So basically what that will do is it will take any white space we have on this side and any white space we have on that side and remove it. So that imprint on ribbon will print so for the best mum heart and then straight away you'll get uh, for the best mum again, there'll be no space. So let's say, for example, you want a little bit of space at the um, end of this particular imprint. We go into properties, click on crop both, and then we have options. So you could say no cropping. So let me just click done and click out just to show you what that means. So no cropping means there's nothing on that space, that left hand space, um, sorry, side anyway, but it will print that white space. So you'll get quite a nice gap at the end of your first imprint before it starts a second imprint. But I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on no cropping and I'm going to click on right only. Click done. Okay. So because there's nothing on the left hand side anyway, it will remove that white space. I hope that's clear. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more demonstrations specifically on cropping. Um, I am aware that there's, there's a couple of demonstrations I do need to update. So I will cover that again. OK, so then once you're happy with that, go into properties. We have put in its printing length is 1000 centimetres. It's cropping the right only. And then I'm going to click OK. And then we simply click on the e-mark icon to send our imprint. OK, got that? Great. Right, so I'm going to come back again and again. So these signs, we recently, and it is quite recent, that we added a few more um, categories here. So we've got the signs. Now, these signs are our uh, um, special coated um, PVC signs. You know, these are slightly scratch and water resistant. And we have the little punched, um, you know, the little punched um, tags that we have that make great key rings. You can print either side of those. Um, and there is a demonstration um, already in albums to show you how to print onto those. OK, make nice fridge magnets, actually. Mother's Day on Sunday. So if you do have these special coated plastic um, tags, they are self-adhesive on the back. We can even add a little magnet on it and leave mum or grandma or whoever is special to you on Mothering Sunday or any time actually and leave them a little message on the fridge. I must teach my husband how to do this actually. I mean, the kids love it. You know, you can imagine they go to the fridge, you might put a notice on there saying, keep out or I'm watching you. Anyway, let's go back now. Labels. Again, if you are printing onto any labels, we've got our A4 color label sheets. And as mentioned, anything that you, if I click on here, all of our labels, if I click in properties, okay, will start from the lateral printing position. The default is um, center, except if you're printing onto labels. And that means... Centre means it starts from the centre bit there, but lateral, your labels will start from this outer edge. And if you're using our collet label sheets, and you'll notice that there is that outline on every sheet. OK, so you simply line that edge or that edge, depending on whether you're left handed or right handed, up with the guidelines, send that imprint, and then that will print beautifully into the middle of your label. Again, but you can make changes on here as well. Now, I'm conscious that, um, of the time, so without having to want to rush anything, I'm just going to go through. We also have our endless labels here. So that is our transparent, white glossy and also our textile labels. So the textile labels are fantastic. If I just click on this one, for example, um, you know, you can put a, a label in a, if you're making a bag or something, use it on the textile label. Once you've printed onto our textile labels, you have to iron it to make it um, um, sort of make it stay. So then you can wash it. Please do follow the washing instructions. I mean, obviously, if you're going to wash it just a 90 degree, then yes, of course, that will impact on the colour. But if you follow the washing instructions, um, those colours will stay. 
for a certain amount of imprints. Okay, and with our labels, again, you can make changes. Um, you can change it, do whatever you want with it. Okay, so if I just go back now, discard the changes, and then go back again. So categories, if you've not already had a play, and what I recommend people do, when you first get the app open, start by going into the categories. First thing you do is print. Click onto one, send it to your device and print it. Best way to have a play. Okay, so we've been through um, the properties, the grid. We know what undo and redo is. We also know what the zoom is here. I do recommend that if you're using your phones, but also if you're using a tablet or an iPad, it's really good. Remember that if you are using that maximum size there and you want to get to the end of that label or the imprint line rather, put your finger on that little white dot there and move that across and it will take you to the end there. Okay, so then just going back. Does anybody have any questions? Right, okay, so just got here. If the grandchildren just said, right, we'll watch. All right, okay. Right, okay, it will be on, this will be on the group for 30 days um, and I will also attempt to save it in albums as well. So going back to the menu, top left, my imprints shows you all of your imprints. Now, let's say, for example, you want to delete some of your imprints. We have delete options. So we simply click on here and then you can either select all just going to deselect de that and, and, and um, delete them all. Or you can, let me just go back to um, delete options and then we're going to, you can at this point then click on the ones you wish to delete. So click on that toggle there and then we might want to delete that one and we could delete that one. Okay. And that one, for example, and then we simply click on that delete there. Are you sure you want to delete this imprint? Okay, and it will go through and delete all of those that you've selected. That is another great tip. We've already touched on export options. So like, for example, if I want to send a couple of my imprints um, to a friend or even save them into a file, I'd click on export options. And then we can either select them all or we can select the ones that we wish to send. So I'm going to click on that one here and let's click on that one there, for example. And then we click on that little box there with the upward facing arrow. So if I click on here, then you've got your options here. OK. Um, so you can copy them, you can save them to files. Um, remember, if you want to email them to, across to a friend or sometimes if you um, have been creating something and you've got a problem with it or you want some advice on it, you might hear me say, can you send me a copy of that imprint, please? This is what I mean you do. So you click on export, you'll get this pop up box and then you click on email and then you'd put my email address in there, okay. There we go, Chrissy Dighton there. And then maybe pop your subject and then send it to me. Yes, I know it's empty, I'm still going to send it. Okay, import. I can't stress enough. So let's say, for example, um, we have done, I might say to you, um, okay, uninstall and reinstall the app for whatever reason. Before you uninstall your app, I will always urge you to save your imprints. And the way you do that is, again, by we're going to click on export, select all, okay? Click on that little rectangular box with an upward facing arrow there, click on that. Pop-up box is here, and then I'm going to save it to a file, okay? So we can click on save to files. And then you can select your file. Now I'm going to um, select a new one. So we've got a file up here with a plus sign. So if I click here and then I'm going to name that. So imprint and I'm just going to down here, put today's date, um, which is the 14th. 
of March. Okay, and then we click save. So they are now nicely saved. So when you then reinstall the app, you'll want to import those imprints. So this is where this comes in. We simply click on import. Then you can see we've got browse. If I click on browse, and then we can look up by going recents, okay? And there's my imprints. Now, there's a lot of imprints there and I've saved them all, so that's going to take a while. But it's here that I would click on once it's all fully done. We click on that, okay? So let me just select one for now to import. Let's just import one I haven't got. I don't think I've got this if I click on that one. It's an invalid file. Trust me to do that one. Anyway, that's how you import them. Oh, hello, Jan. It's my sister watching. Um, and then I'm just going to go back now to my imprints. So we've got delete options, export, import. If you have any questions or there's something that you want me to talk to you personally about with regards to this, then please do say. I'm hoping that it's all been quite clear. You can send your imprints straight from here. So if I click on here, automatically sending that one. If I just go back here now and then go to settings. Now I did mention that I'd show you how to um, add fonts. Before I do that, it's very rare that you will turn your or open your app and won't see any templates. But let's say, for example, if you did, if you think, well, where's all my templates? Simply click on refresh templates. You can select your language. You can even change your um, measurements from millimeters to inch if you want. So whatever changes you make, always click done. Import custom fonts. So I'm going to click on import custom fonts. That will take me to browse and I'll click on there and it takes me to my files. Now, when you are um, saving um, fonts, so I use um, Google fonts and also Daft fonts and I know there are so many more out there. You select the one that you want. There is um, a demonstration in the albums. Um, so please do go there, but you basically save it to a file and then you would, I'm going to go to my iPad. Let me see. Um, I've probably got them all on here actually, but let me just see. Um, it has to either be a TTF or an OTF. So let me just find one. Let me bear with me. Um, if I click on this one, for example, there we go. TTF. OK, so either TTF or you'll see um, point OTF. So if I just click on that one there, font successfully imported. See how easy it is? OK, I'm going to show you that one in a minute. But whilst I'm on this page, eMark settings, click on eMark settings. Occasionally you'll hear me say to you, can you tell me what your firmware number is, please? Your device has to be connected for this. And if you look down the left hand side, we have, there's my create, firmware. And that's my firmware number there. Can you see on the left hand, sorry, the right hand side? I haven't named my eMark yet, but you can name your eMark, okay? And also eMark sound. Now I do recommend you keep this on. You can turn it off if you wish, but the whole point of having the sound is what, so as you know when you've come to the end of your imprint, particularly when you're doing a two and three line imprint. So, because you come to the first, to the end of the first line and it beeps, you move it down, it beeps, and across it beeps, and so on. So I do recommend you keep that on. Now I did mention to you that um, we've got a sleep mode. There we go, three minute sleep mode. You can change that. Um, I don't recommend you change it to zero, um, but you could change it to um, well, anything you want, really. And some people, when you're connecting, <clears throat> when you're first starting out, if you're connecting to your device and it might take you a little while to connect, longer than three minutes. So then I'd maybe recommend you put it on to maybe 10 minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, and always select save. Otherwise, it won't happen. 
So my email will now go to sleep after 10 minutes of not using, okay? Quick cleaning. I don't recommend that you touch that. So that's all to do with the amount of ink that's used when, we're, when it's doing its internal cleaning program. Wi-Fi channel. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now I know that we do have quite a few of our members who go out to do craft fairs. And if there are thousands, we'd hope there were thousands of Wi-Fi, you know, lots of people there at this craft fair, and there may be um, obviously lots of Wi-Fi connections. So, and you may be struggling with connection a little bit. You can change the channel. Emark Wi-Fi channel. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we simply click on it. It's currently on the default, which is three. So if I click on the number three, again, we've got a roll bar at the bottom. Um, I'm a bit of a geek and I have Wi-Fi analyzers on my phone. <laughs> so I know how to look to see which channels are less busy but you can go through them. The non-overlapping channels here in the UK are one, six and 11. So once you've made your change, say if I want to change it to six, we click on done and then save. Okay, your email will automatically disconnect. Okay, and the email will flash a bit or you'll create. And then all we do is click to join. So that is in your eMark settings. Okay, so it's my eMark settings I've successfully saved and I am now back and connected. So if I just go back again and again, we have start quick cleaning. If your imprints are not looking as, as they should be, um, do a, an app clean. So I'm going to do one for you to show you how to do that live. So I recommend you fold a piece of paper or card over two or three times because there is going to be some ink coming out. OK, and then we click on start quick cleaning. But before we press anything else, I'm just going to turn you down and around like so. We put our device onto the card or the paper. And it's at this point that we click on start. I oh, clean through tape now. OK, it only takes a couple of seconds. And there we have our three lines, which is what we're looking for. With the tricolour cartridges, as you know, there are three tanks, or as you probably don't know, there's three tanks, and it mixes those the ink. Now, if you're using one particular colour, a lot of it, like Christmas time, I use lots of greens, lots of golds and lots of reds, those colours will run out first. So if you find you've got 30% um, batch, sorry, 30% ink left, um, but you're not getting all the colours, and it will more than likely be because you've used more of one colour. So I tend to use them all that way, um, and then I get full use of the cartridge. It tends to get to zero. So, you know, just bear that in mind when you are doing projects. And if you're printing lots of black, please do bear in mind that there is a black pigment ink cartridge as well. You can also print the greys. So this is your quick cleaning page. Okay, now I'm going to go back um, in a minute. But first of all, can you see here, eMark create version at the bottom there? Okay, so um, I'll need to check that. Let me just go back here. Now we've also got help. So how to change the cartridge, we've got online app, how to change the cartridge, how to clean the printhead, you know, all this information is there for you to use, please use it. Now before I go, I'm going to do one more thing, um, because I want to um, show you something. I have a lot of people say to me, how do I get to more imprints prints online? If you see at the bottom there, we've got more templates online. To access this, you have to disconnect your app from the, um, sorry, your email from the app, your email create. So turn it off. Okay. And then you need to just click on more templates online. Okay. Just come out, you go back in again. You might need to just close the app down, bear with me. Yeah, close that down. I'm going to go back into the create app because we need the internet for this. And then if I just click on new imprint, that's where you access it. And then we click on more templates online. And here we have them. Please do.
do go into this page because there's lots on here. So with the create, we've got journaling. If I click on this one, for example, I mean, look at all of these that we've got. How many of you are using these free templates? Use them. And if I just go back here, we've got lifestyle. Again, there are these are all free for you. We've also got home. Now I use this one quite a lot, the home. Okay, labeling all of your kitchen cupboards, etc. Garden. Okay, again, I mean we've got spring hopefully coming soon. We've got some wonderful templates. So how do we add these to the app? So I'm going to add that one. I've clicked on it. Let me just get this a little bit clearer. There we go. Can you see that okay? Click on download. Little circle at the top with a bouncing arrow. I click on that. And there's the imprint or the template that I've just touched. So if I click on that now, it's adding it directly to the app. How clever is that? So let me just go back again. I'll show you how to do that one more time. So I'm going to use this one here. Click on the um, template that you want. So that one there. Then we click on download. Bouncing arrow in the circle at the top. Click on that. And it's this one here, the second one. So if I click on that one there. Oops, that was the first one. We go back. It's that one there. But the fact it downloads it directly to the app is brilliant. Now, I do know that lots of our members also love the idea of using um, ten, uh, websites such as pixabay.com. There are demonstrations on the um, in albums for that. So please do um, go in there and have a look. Now, I'm going to ask a question. Have I um, missed anything? Have anybody got any questions? Is there something that you would like to see me do again, please do ask now um, because, I mean, you can ask a question anyway and I'll pick them up later. Um, but what I'd like to know is, um, have you found this interesting? Have you found it useful? Next Tuesday, I'm going to be doing exactly the same Facebook Live for our eMark users, for those that have the business app as well as the craft app. And I will be just demonstrating on the business app. Um, so I will probably do the same time again. I think seven o'clock um, suits most people. I will send out a notification. Um, so whilst I'm just waiting to see if there's any questions coming through, um, Kate, Kimmy, if you're there, can you give me, um, oh, thank you, Kate, give me a thumbs up if everything was okay. If I've missed anything, please do say. I'm going to go into a different category now. Do scroll across. Look, here we go. We have a look. We've got Halloween there, Christmas, and we do change these. Um, they're not always the same. So let's do um, let's do a spring one. So lots of lovely cat um, templates here. So let's just put this one in. Click on it. Download. Little bouncing arrow at the top. Click on that. If you're using Android, it will probably be different to, to, to this, but um, you'll see it when you actually um, download them. Click on that one there. And there's the imprint. Okay, right. I have taken up plenty of your time. Um, I would like to know um, one last time if there's any questions. Um, have I covered everything? Let me just go back into the app just to make sure I've covered everything whilst you are thinking about whether or not there's any questions. Okay, so um, let me just go back into menu. Remember the menu is the most important part, the most important feature on here is where you access everything. So new imprint, go and select a two line imprint this time. And then I'm just going to add a couple of images Let's add a clip art and let's do something from um, motivation this time. And let's add the 
ladybird there. Remember, everything goes over to that top left. It's highlighted, so I can make some changes. Okay, I can even change the image if I wish by clicking on change image. Go back to clip art. Let's go back to motivation and let's change it to the frog. How many of you know that? Highlighted, so I can duplicate. Let's move that down here. I'm going to add another image by clicking on add. Images, photos, and select the photo that you so wish to use. And let me select one. So all of these that I have saved are from um, this website, pixabay.com. Please always check for copyright. Um, I haven't come across one yet, but do check. It will tell you on the right hand side. So let's select, let's do this one. Remember, it's got the highlight around so we can move it around. I'm going to duplicate it, settings, duplicate and move that up. And I'm just going to make that smaller by clicking on scale. Something else that you can do if, let's say, for example, you've created an imprint and you don't want anybody else to um, change that by going into settings. Did you know you can lock it? You do now. OK. And then once you're happy with that, we can either save it or send it. So I'm going to save it this time. OK, and it is saving. It's just loading now. Quite a few images on this, so it takes a little time. Right, OK. I think that there's no more questions coming through. I've probably given you a lot of information. Do go back through this. Um, and look for those areas that are particularly interesting to you. Um, I will do um, a lot more on shapes actually in a demonstration because the shapes, if you haven't used them, A, why not? Um, let me just do, let's do a rectangle here. Just remember, click on zoom. So I'm just going to turn that around by clicking on rotate, move that around. OK, move it across. There we go. And then I'm going to change the thickness. Let me just do one more demonstration. So we click on style. Got our thickness line there and it's the line. So I'm going to move that little toggle across. There we go. Make it to thickness 41. And then I can click on colour and change that colour. OK, so. Found that useful? Right, okay, I'm going to bid you all a good evening. Don't forget to watch me um, a week on Thursday. I'm going to be on Hobby Maker with the new Go. Um, really excited about that. Um, and also next Tuesday, seven o'clock for our members who have the eMark and want to know all about the eMark app. It really is a fabulous um, at that one so um, probably take about the same amount of time but as with this one I shall be saving it um, for 30 days it will be on the Facebook group so thank you everybody and I wish you all a good night